Hi, everybody. It is Wednesday, August 16th. We are in Birmingham, Alabama for our show tonight. And then after the show tonight, we drive on to New Orleans. So we are plowing along here. Uh, almost, almost done. I think we have about 10 days left. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... I was really happy the way uh, my interview turned out with Rick Beato. Really, it's been really nice to see all the comments on it. He's got such an incredibly great YouTube channel. And to have had a chance to get together with Rick again at his place and, and do an interview was really, really fun. Hopefully we'll do some more in the future. I'm going to give a little bit of music here because i got to get ready to check out of the hotel yeah, our schedule usually is we get in about five or six in the morning on our from our previous drive, then check into a hotel room, sleep a few hours, and then check out, get back, go do the gig, and then head off for another drive. It's it's pretty nuts, but uh, shows have been going great. So you know that's that's the reason we're here, and that's all that really, at the end of the day, matters. Um, now, I did a, uh, a, a video about this guy long, long time ago, and I managed to find another song from this album. It's really hard to find for me, but uh, it's really fun. Um, his name uh, on the album, this is from 1995, his name is Steve Kowalczyk, but he now goes by the name Steve Santoro. Uh, really worth checking out when we he's really a talented guy but when we did this album uh, it, it's called Moods and Grooves by Steve Kowalczyk and um, it was kind of very you know in, in the Harry Connick sort of uh, early Harry Connick style but um, we had a ball doing this record it was one of these things that um, uh, when I went in I Ahmed Erdogan was the producer of this, and he wanted upright uh, bass on it. And I said, you know, I, I started on upright, but I haven't played uh, consistently for so many years that, you know, I could, you know, kind of BS my way through it, but that's not how I like to work. But I said, look, I have this this bass um, with me here that, that uh, check it out. If it works, let's let's go with it. And it was, I still have it, and it's great. It's a uh, Washburn AB45 acoustic bass. Now, when I first got the bass, it was a fretted bass, and I did not like it at all. It just it didn't feel right. It didn't sound right. Uh, as a last resort, pulled the frets out of it and filled the, all the fret marker areas. And uh, the bass, in its own way, said, thank you. Um, because it's it's a really great sounding instrument. I've used it with Willie Nelson and a bunch of different people. I've got the black nylon wrap strings on it, flat wounds, but um, it's a uh, it's one of these things that you just kind of go, you just never know. It's it was worth uh, taking a chance on it and and altering the instrument. So, uh, but I rarely get a chance to play this this kind of style, and I love doing it. I did it with Bill Cantos. I've done it with Manhattan Transfer, um, a number of different things, but it's not in my, day, you know, my usual repertoire of getting um, for the calls I get. But on this one, the band on this is Alan Broadbent on piano, myself on bass, the great Carlos Vega on drums, Joe Picaro on vibes and percussion, Dean Parks on guitar, Nino Tempo on saxophone, and it was produced by Shane Keister and Ahmed Erdogan. Shane is a fabulous keyboard player, and I worked with him on many, many projects in Nashville. So I'm just going to play this song for you. This is Steve Kowalczyk from 1995, and the song is called Mean Alligator. So here we go, but I love playing this kind of stuff. Just a mean alligator If I don't see ya I'll catch you later Watch you sweat and run around Sit back and act so cool There's no one I know who is meaner Who could step into my arena I just love the dirty word And it's always service with a smile I've been mean, like the day 
the sound of that bass i should use it more but i love when i get called to do something like this because i just love that kind of a groove i love the swing of it. i want to see if there's one other thing that i saw there's a snippet of it from this album let's see if it can be discovered here otherwise uh, hold on Yeah, this was like a little demo length thing of his. This was a, a track I would wish there was a whole one on here because uh, it was really, really cool. I think the the first time I did Steve might have been around, you can check around video 756 maybe, somewhere in that area. Um, it was great. But this is called Mr. Personality. This is real short. It's only like 30 seconds, but it was really a cool tune. So here we go. That is power when they're around
all there was available uh, on this um you know it's weird i, I would try to track it because the whole album was really good i really enjoyed it and then he moved on and uh, like i said changed his name to steven santoro and there's a whole bunch of like current stuff i mean he's been working ever since then and uh he's really a talented cat and uh it was really a uh, fun to, but it was really fun to work with this and also just hearing carlos vega playing god i miss that guy he and i were like boom he was one of my favorite drummers miss him every day so okay so i'm gonna get get going here and um i also saw a notification i, I i'm not sure exactly how current it is but I, i'm i somebody sent me an obituary for jerry moss uh, and jerry was half of a and m he was the m of 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 a and m herb Alpert and Jerry Moss started that label and uh, I used to see Jerry all the time. He was really like the business side of running the label. He signed all these great artists to it, and they built really quite an empire uh, with that label and if that's the case i haven't seen, you know i had a and m's been gone for a long time it's been henson studios went through a lot of changes over the years um, but in its go in the golden age it was one of the best studios and i mean i still work there the henson the recording studios are still intact and i still end up going over there and doing projects but it's just weird to go on the lot and not see you know jerry out walking around and herb and everybody but uh if that's the case, my heart is with his family and the music community as a whole, because he was definitely one of the great pioneers in our business. So, you know, I'm going to dig a little bit further. I just saw this before uh, starting this video. So I'm going to dig into that a little deeper. So I'm out of here. I'm going to go get ready to um, get out, check out, and then go to the hall. And I'll have a little video up this afternoon of whatever wherever we're playing today i have no idea until i get there so but uh man the uh, tennessee theater was something so spectacular uh yesterday when we walked in there i just kind i walked into that that main entry area and it was somewhere between the moroccan palace and versailles and you know, it's like you're going holy crap and it's just it's like this was the golden age of theaters that's for sure and uh but that's it. So I will see you a little later today. I'm going to get ready and get the heck out of here. Bye.